we were talking about cross-media um, ROI measurement, and um, we talked about the challenges of doing that and the need to measure the audience of each of the different media pieces that we have today and the fragmentation that exists and so forth. And then um, somebody on the panel made a comment that we're moving to these real-time measurement systems, and I uh, voiced uh, a concern which, uh, based upon my experience, um, is, I think, a very valid concern, which is that if we provide all of these immediate measurements, and I think that, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, all right, but, and, and I'm not saying that they won't be available, they're, they're coming. One of the concerns from a marketing um, uh, guy's perspective, I think, is that there's a danger that that immediate measurement will lead to a conclusion that the only marketing elements worth investing in are the ones that produce an immediate effect. And the ones that produce an immediate effect are the ones that are price related or promotion related. And remember, we're talking now to a consumer who is way more price sensitive than we've ever seen in our lifetime, right? And it, 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 I'm worried that it's gonna distract us from the longer term branding value of advertising. And I've seen it happen on the internet with search, where search is now a half of all online advertising. And the immediacy of that was very seductive. And uh, you know, led people to think that search was the only thing you had to worry about, search advertising. Thereby ignoring all of the branding mm -hmm. value that uh, had to be built up uh, in, in, in the funnel. And so, and so I was just you know, voicing that concern that we've just got to be really careful here that these measurement systems aren't necessarily aligned with the balance between the short term and the long term that I think a marketer needs to have. So actually, you're, you're hitting on the talk, topic of attribution? Attribution is a part of the issue absolutely with search because there was, it was basically, here, if somebody clicks on a paid search ad and then goes off and buys the product, well, clearly it was the search advertising that has to get all of, you know, all of the credit, 100% of the credit. Well, 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 hold on a second. You know, if the click on that ad wasn't accompanied with a recognition or an understanding of the value of that brand in the consumer's mind, you ain't necessarily, as a marketer, gonna get that purchase, I don't think. I mean, it, it, let me give you an example, all right? So let's say I'm BMW, right? Do I want to advertise to, to a kid who's 20 years old who today can't afford to buy a BMW? You know, the short-term immediate people would say, no, it's a wasted impression. All right, well, what happens when that kid of 20 years old is 40, he's got the money to buy a BMW, and now he's got to decide between BMW, Lexus, and Mercedes. If he doesn't know what BMW represents or has the value in his mind that the, of the brand, if that hasn't been built up with advertising over time, I don't think BMW will get that sale. I think we'll go to to Mercedes or to Lexus. So that's the trade-off, it seems to me, between the longer term, you know, branding investments that has to be that have to be made and the near term. And you know, I, I saw this happen firsthand in the 80s and the 90s um, in consumer packaged goods when scanning came along, right? Scanning came along so suddenly you could, within a matter of days, measure the sales that you got uh, in a retail store. And what did it show? It showed the impact of price reductions and in-store displays and newspaper feature ads, not the longer term value of branding. And it shifted $40 billion a year, a year of incremental money went into price and promotion per year. And uh, you know, uh, some of it certainly at the expense of advertising. So that's the scenario that I worry about being repeated here. So price and promotion was the keyword search of its day. You, you know, that's a really interesting thing to say because that is exactly what I had uh, concluded myself, that you could argue, you could argue that all of the pricing information that's communicated through coupons and feature ads in the newspaper are analogous to um, the, um, the search uh, outcomes today. And so you gotta be really, really careful because 
you know, look, brand managers today are under more ROI pressure and more immediate pressure than ever before. They've got to generate these sales, you know, um, in a quarter or even faster. And so I think that that pressure, which has just grown over time, coupled with the availability of information that shows what's moving the needle, you know, on a daily basis, boy, that's, I don't think that's necessarily good for the argument that you ought to be investing money in, uh, in longer term brand building. I think it's a, I think it's a really valid point. If you're, a, you know, if you're a large company, you probably, a large established company, you're gonna be, maybe you, got, you have more resources to put against you know, longer term uh, kind of in, investments. If you're a small business where you don't have that brand awareness yet, and you probably don't have the money to build it up, you know, over time. Yeah, that's you know, that's where search, for example, performs really well. Which is one of the reasons why search uh, ad dollars, um, you know, have come to such a large extent from small businesses. It's a great kind of uh, it levels a playing field, if you will, for a small business. Um, and uh, you know, I'm not I'm not suggesting that they uh, that they shouldn't continue doing that. But you know that's a very different situation from you know from a BMW as you said. If you don't have again that yeah. brand value established in the minds of the consumer, I think you are then really, really playing in dangerous territory because then it becomes all price, mm -hmm. and then you know then you're competing maybe with private label if you don't have that brand image and that brand value communicated. Um, you know, remember that the advent of fast scanning data caused the typical CPG brand's marketing mix to move from 70% advertising, 30% promotion to the opposite. Mm. And, um, you know, again, that's, that's the concern that I have as, as we go forward here with the availability of data. The end of branding. You know, it, it, it's a, I think it's a, you know, it's a valid concern. I think, um, it, you know, it, it, we, we have to figure out ways of maintaining you know that that brand's value. I mean, look at what happened. Look at what happened with this recession. All right. So we tracked through our uh, Comsco ARS unit. We tracked um, over the course of three years. We did a survey in March of 08, March of 09, and March of 2010. And we asked consumers, "Do you buy the brand that you prefer?" All right. And there was a drop of 10 points. In, in people saying, yes, I buy the brand I prefer over just a two-year period. And it correlated almost perfectly with the growth of private label. Mm. Right? Now, think of, this, you know, think of that situation. Private label brands have been improved tremendously. The quality is much higher. If it was the recession and pricing that forced you to try private label for the first time, and then you suddenly go, oh, this stuff's pretty good. You know, are you going to go back to... You know, the national brand, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a good chance that you might not. Mm -hmm. And so this recession might really have caused some shifts in, in, uh, in brand share that are not going to, to come back. So that's just, an, just, just another illustration of the role that price can play in consumer choice in these kind of, uh, in these kind of days. One of the things, uh, discussions I got into him with him, though, was on um, the definition of Hispanic. So the definition of Hispanic is self-reported, all right? Uh, now, you know, what that says to me is there might be a certain number of Hispanics who, for whatever reason, don't want to say that they're Hispanic. You know, they might view it as being, you know, some politically incorrect, let's say, and you know, certainly research has shown that. And so if it's just, if the people who don't define themselves as Hispanics behave, though, in the same way as Hispanics, it seems to me that the self-definition could be undercounting the, the, the Hispanic population by a significant amount. And we got into a really interesting theoretical discussion about that. But uh, I, I thought it was just the, what they had to go through here with, with, uh, with completing it was pretty amazing. A lot of money, a lot of our money. <laughs> We're going to do it. <laughs>